I can hear you fine. Do you have some slides? Yes. Can you see them? Yeah, I can see them. The floor is yours. Okay, great. So hi everyone, my name is Bessie Nock and I am an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University in industrial, I mean, in engineering and public policy and civil and environmental engineering. And so my presentation is focused on how we can integrate stakeholder preferences into generation expansion planning models. So as we know that there, there are many objectives in electricity planning, like lowering greenhouse gas emissions um, and like and enhancing water quality and other things. And so this work was really guided by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 7, which was ensuring access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy. So in the developed world, I mean, we've seen a lot of these models, right? The optimization model is to minimize cost subject to demand, reliability, and environmental constraints. But in the developing world, the problem kind of flips on its head due to the grid being underdeveloped, access being limited, and the system being considering um, unreliable. So the problem becomes to maximize social benefits subject to a cost. So when we're thinking about um, estimating social benefit and equality preferences, we use the Human Development Index, which is a st composite statistic de developed by the United Nations, um, combining life expectancy, education, and per capita income indicators. And so along the y-axis, you see the Human Development Index, and along the x, you see the per capita energy and electricity consumption by country, and each data points a different country. And so we are saying that if a person or a stakeholder value distributional equality highly, that their preferences would probably take this logarithmic functional form where they see a high benefit for low electricity, um, for increasing electricity consumption when people have a low level, and then it kind of tapers off as the electricity consumption grows. So then um, we are now creating a formulation for changing the objective function of these generation expansion models where we are using a utility uh, framework for, from the economics literature. And so we're calling this the maximize energy access model. And here the utility of the stakeholder is derived from potential electricity access. So that's um, U of XIPI, where XI is the total electrical energy that can be delivered to node I, and PI is the number of consumers in node I. And so the per capita electricity consumption in each node is going to be raised to the one minus alpha, where we're using alpha to um, change the concavity of that logarithmic function. And so um, the higher the alpha is or the closer it gets to one, that's going to be the higher their preference for distributional equality, meaning that they place a high weight when um, increasing at the low, lower levels of electricity consumption. And then at an alpha of zero, that means that people don't care at all about distributional equality and they only care about maximizing electricity, total electricity in the country. And so here we formulated this as a mixed integer linear program in Python and Golovi, and the objective function is approximated using a piecewise linear approximation. So obviously I don't have time to go through all the constraints, but this is a flow of information diagram. Um, so the endogenous variables are highlighted in those orange boxes. So the me model will take inputs as the social planner's preference for equality, budget constraints, geography, population, generation costs and transmission costs for the different countries. It will decide where to invest in power plants and transmission lines. And then that runs up to a power flow uh, evaluation. And then that will decide the electricity consumption around the country. This will run up to our budget constraint and all of these variables feed into our social welfare function, which is the utility that the stakeholder gets from increasing electricity access in the country. So we did a, like a test case um, on Liberia. So this is a population density map of where people live. You see most people live in the northern part of the country, almost nobody in the southern part. Why we're doing it in Liberia? Well, 81% of the country didn't have any access at all to electricity when we started this project. And um, then if they do have electricity access, a lot of them were getting it from the Liberian Electricity Corporation, which is the main power system, which is only in the um, capital city of Monrovia, which is in that big circle, Montserrado, that's the county. So just to give you some brief results. Um, so this is at a budget of $10 million per year annually for 30 years. 
and we see that the there's there's two maps the low equality preference when you're left um, is when they don't care at all and the high quality preference when you're right is alpha 0.86 so that's assuming that they have that logarithmic functional form and we can see that at the low quality preference i mean it essentially turns into a cost minimization problem of maximizing um, who the amount of people connected at the lowest cost and so you build big power plants in the large city which is what the city which is what the country is already doing um, when you add in the, okay when you add in this equality preference the big trade-off is um, transmission line infrastructure investments and then if we increase this by a factor of five we see that um, if you don't care at all about equality then you're not going to reach your universal access target and when you do care you invest in more transmission one, I, one thought would be to turn this into a multi-period optimization model. That's a collaboration thought. You can screenshot this if we can talk to you about it later. My conclusions are that preferences do matter and we should include those in electricity models and this is my contact information. The end. <laughs> yes, Robbie, are you there? Yes, yes. <laughs> A question from Miha. My 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 uh, internet's a bit lag. Hey, Destiny. This is me here. Um, I have a question about um, what you're considering in generation. Are you looking at mostly utility scale, or are you also considering like DER um, scenarios or alternatives? So we considered both. We um, included DZ. Uh, PV diesel mini grids, we considered solar home systems at the utility scale, we considered hydro and oil, and that was based on the country's national electrification plan. Okay, other questions? I have a yeah. quick question about the, the results. You showed a difference with a different equity preference. What's the sort of total system cost impact of that different um, uh, equity uh, preference? Um, so, I mean, this, this is when we're keeping the budget consistent. So um, this is, I mean, I don't really know the cost difference because, um, I mean, we, we constrained the budget at $10 million for the, year, for the annual budget. So. Um, you're not actually going to be evaluating that cost difference, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So if you remove the budget constraint, then you'd see a difference in total cost then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing that we could, um, that we proposed to do was to have this run at the back end of a least cost model. And so your least cost model could actually uh, determine what budget you would need to invest in reaching your ideal power system. And then we could actually use our model to tie onto the end of that. and actually try to understand how different stakeholder preferences might utilize that budget that you've allocated differently and how that might either hinder or help you reach your electrification goals in the country. Thank you. Destiny, I have a quick question. Uh, uh -huh. This is Megan Bittalian from Global Good and Intellectual Ventures. Um, my question is, are you um, considering the nationally defined contributions for Liberia in your model in regard to the budget, or do you have a plan to inform the NDCs? Um, I am not including those right now. I would need to talk to my collaborator since he's the one that's been mostly communicating with uh, people in country. Thank you. Can I ask the role of um, energy services here? Because uh, are we looking at supplying people with two, 240 volts AC, or would it be um, adequate to? to run a very distributed systems on 24 volts DC, for example. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Ah. Um, I, I, I'll leave it if you can't hear me because uh, there's nothing I can do to improve. Okay, I can email you. There's also a question from uh, Severin Reitberg. Thanks, Tom. Uh, hi, Destiny. This is Severin Ryberg again from the National Central News. I was just curious if you've projected your demand profiles at all, or if you've just uh, maintained some historical profiles. Um, so we used uh, a study from Modi, which projected peak demand in the different counties um, up until 2035. 
and are these based on like um, like economic development and population growth and these sorts of things? Yeah, so um, it's based on like urbanization trends as well. And uh, they do include population growth. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one final question from Daniel Olson. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, your objective function is maximizing social benefit uh, and that's related to energy access. I'm wondering if this framework would be compatible with also including the impact of emissions from different sorts of generation and what impact that has on uh, people's well-being. Right, so one of the things that we're looking at now um, is trying to tie the equality with the CO2 emission preferences and to see how either caring about them first uh, would impact your development. So right now we're kind of thinking that countries are gonna have certain functional forms based on where they are in their CO2 emissions. So made at the beginning, right now in country, a lot of stakeholders in Ghana, for example, don't care a lot about reducing their CO2 emissions and that's because they don't actually admit that, admit that much relative to other countries. But as the countries actually uh, keep emitting more, they want to, they focus more on reducing and they receive a higher preference for that. And so then trying to like look at how that would actually change your development and how legacy generation would impact your development is something that we also want to consider. But getting that functional form is very difficult. So if you know a way to estimate that, uh, it's a good, it's a good time to collaborate. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Great. So thank you, Destiny.